was finally able to go for the first time in several days and the pooch has gone down a little bit. Um, and I don't necessarily like feel better right now. I don't, I don't feel worse, but it's still not like great because I had to work so hard to get it out. And you know, like when you're, you have to bear down to push it because you're constipated. And like, that's not an awesome thing to do right now. Right? So, and just really, it's very uncomfortable in this entire region right now. I'm actually kind of nauseous now. I might have to go take some nausea medicine, but, or, or throw up, you know, whichever one comes first, actually, I think the letter's gonna come first. Okay, so a little bit of a false alarm. I did gag and I did try to throw up, but nothing ended up coming out, lucky for me. Um, but now my stomach hurts worse because of that. So I'm gonna go sit my ass down on the couch. Um, I do want to walk around a little bit more, like go get on my treadmill, cause I don't wanna go outside walk around the block and then suddenly the stuff starts coming loose and then I have shat myself. So I want to be in the house, walk on the treadmill and try to get things moving just a little bit more. Maybe take like a teaspoon of prune juice or something to kind of help everything else on its way. But now that I'm nauseous on top of everything, it just adds a completely new layer, especially the threat of vomiting because definitely almost just did. Um, Um, the pain under my rib is still there, but I do think I've managed to get most of the gas and air bubbles that was left over out. I can't feel it moving around anymore and I can't hear it moving around anymore. Um, so I think I tackled that last night, but like my lower back and hips hurt so much and my intestines hurt a little less now that I was able to get a little bit out. So I feel like I'm on a decent path now, but I really think it's gonna be a long day. Good morning. Today is the first day on my own. He went back to work and it is eight o'clock in the morning on Monday, December 19th. And I woke up feeling just terribly unwell. I went to bed feeling terribly unwell, just like not feeling good and I still don't really feel good today. But I was able to wake up and have a morning poop. So exciting. Um, I didn't have to strain this time. I didn't have to push. It was just things were just moving along. Thank God. So I think it'll help. But I do still feel pretty nauseous right now. Um, probably take one of those nausea pills. Maybe I just need to eat something. Um, my ribs do hurt quite a bit still. And I'm definitely just gonna take it easy today, especially since I'm here by myself. I don't wanna push it and get into a conundrum, you know? So I'm gonna eat something and then I'm gonna shower I'm gonna take my patches off. I only needed to keep them on for like two to three days, so I probably could have taken them off like Saturday or something, but I'll take them off today before I get in the shower. And then just kind of sit in there and let the water just run over me and then scrub a dub dub, all these things. Um, and then I think I'm just gonna veg out on the couch because I just really don't feel good just kind of like a queasiness and still kind of like a lightheaded stuffiness just not not favorable um i did manage to walk on the treadmill last night for 10 minutes so i'm hoping that's what helped get things moving so that i can like have a nice doocy today so that's great um, but yeah I don't know. I just generally don't feel good. And I don't really know what that's about. Maybe 
maybe it's just like an after surgery unwellness. I don't know. But yeah, I'm I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot. I was hoping that I would get to wrap some presents today and kind of get that side of Christmas going, but that requires a lot of movement and I just don't know if I have it in me. I feel like I'm gonna be able to have a shower and make it back to the couch and call that a day. Um, granted, I'm giving myself grace. It hasn't even been in a full week yet. So, and of course my body has just gone through a lot of changes and it's still trying to figure out what the hell I just did to it. I still can't like yawn nicely. Like it, my breath still hitches and it, it's uncomfortable. Sneezing still hurts. Coughing still hurts. I am cramping as we speak and it's just kind of like, how would I describe it? It's, um, I, just, I feel wounded. That's the best way to describe it. Like, I just, I feel wounded. <laughs> and I still feel tired. I did sleep all through the night. I think I slept decently. I haven't dreamed and all that, but I still feel kind of tired. Like I could shower and then have a nap. I really might. I might just sleep off and on today. So that's, that's where we're at right now. I'm gonna go try to eat something. Maybe I'll take that nausea pill first and then try to eat something. And yeah, I'll check back in later. It was a lovely shower. I was able to just sit in there and soak for a bit and then scrub. I shaved. I did like a mini, like a very mini facial, as in like I washed my face and then used some massage cream and then did, you know, my products and stuff. And I switched glasses. Now I'm ready to just be on the couch. Um, feeling okay. I was able to go again a little bit, not a little toozy, just, just a little bit. Um, so that's great. And I, oh, I took my, um, I took my bandages off. So let me show you that. So there's stitches here, here, and in the middle where my belly button is. And I couldn't quite see the one with the belly button because um, I didn't have my glasses on. But I sure felt it when I was lotioning my stomach and I kind of pulled up on the skin a little bit and it kind of caught. So yeah, that is there. So yeah, now I'm just gonna, I think I'll have a little something else to eat and take it easy. My auntie is coming over later to help me and make sure that I, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing and not doing what I'm not supposed to be doing. So that's gonna be nice. And then I'm going to just patiently wait for the husband to come home before I try to get back on the treadmill and do any more walking because I figured, I mean, it's still the first week, you know, so I don't need to be doing too, too much for real, but I know that they do want you like up and active and walking a little bit. So 10 minutes on the treadmill will be fine. Um, so I'll do that. And yeah, I'm just going to, just going to take it easy. Maybe catch up on some documentaries. We watched we watched Harry and Megan the other day, like the last two days. And let me tell you something. <laughs> Team Meg and Team Harry. That's it. That's all. Um, I'm American, so we don't do that. It's, it's Diana over here, okay? As far as pain level goes, I was having like a hip thing again and like cramping and just like feeling wounded and stuff like I was saying earlier. But I think the shower 
really helped kind of relax and loosen some stuff up because I don't feel like I need to take any ibuprofen right now, which I purposefully didn't take any earlier because I wanted to shower first to see how I was going to feel, to see if it was going to help. And it seems like it has, so so far so good. Um, but I do have it here with me just in case I need some. Later, I have my water with my stickers. If you guys are interested in any of my sticker products, please visit my Etsy. That's still there. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to hang out, me and the cats. Oh, I specifically didn't let the cats out today because sometimes they don't like to come back in when they're called. They like to lollygag, you know, they like to shuck a little. So that means that I have to go out there, pick them up, and bring them inside. And it's the pick them up part that we're not doing this week for sure for sure um maybe not even next week we'll just have to see how i'm feeling um because the instructions hold on let me bring the instructions up okay so activity instructions keep incisions clean and dry and intact okay to remove dressing in two to three days so that would have been i would have been okay to remove it like saturday sunday like i thought but it's monday so took it off today it's okay to shower but no soaking such as bath hot tub pool for 10 days um, so there's that also pelvic rest no tampons no sex nothing in the vagina vagina or anus no squats no lunges no heavy lifting for six weeks um, so the cats are not heavy lifting obviously so probably by next week or the week after that I'm gonna be able to lift them and everything's gonna be fine but they're telling me it's like don't like hit the gym don't get down there and try to squat like 100 pounds or something like that don't act right just right um but that does mean that this week i'm not picking these cats up so that means that if they want to go outside they're gonna have to wait until their daddy gets home yep so that's gonna be it on that um i'm gonna just be here and i'll check in again with you guys later on thank Bye. you baby thank you thank you um yeah hi Hi, don't don't get to sneezing on me now. I just got out the shower, okay? Okay. So I just woke up from a nap and immediately upon waking up I just felt so like very so so like not very good. So I went to the bathroom and I tried to poop again, but I can't. And that's the thing, like it's not like, oh I can go now and everything's working. It's like I've gone a few times, but it's not I can't go every time that I want, nor can I fart every time that I want. Like it'll come, the pressure will build up, and I can't like get it out, you know? So I think that's leading to, or lending to me not feeling very well in general. Um, but my, my aunt's on her way. So she'll be taking care of me for a little bit or saying to me anyway. Um, I still don't have very much bleeding going on. I do have like a panty liner on just in case, but the only blood I ever see is when I go to the bathroom and then I wipe. Um, so it's very minimal on that front. So um, that's good. But I just, I just don't feel good. And I really think that if I could get like regular and moving again, that it would probably help because I probably just have like a lot of back up and build up going on that has me just feeling like hell. Um, it almost feels like feeling like you're sick, but not. It's just like, it just don't feel good. Like my head is stuffy. Like, you know that feeling when you have to pop your ears? I have that a little bit where my head just feels like busy, like there's just a bunch of air in it. And I keep trying to pop my ears where you hold your nose and blow, but I can't. It doesn't, it doesn't really do anything. I still think my voice sounds a little funny. My, vo my throat is a little less irritated. I did take a spoonful of honey last night and that kind of helped soothe it a little bit, but it's still not like 100% and I think it might be because I have to sleep with my mouth open a little bit because I do still have that deviated septum. And so when one side of my nose closes off, it's just really uncomfortable. So sometimes I'll leave my mouth open just a little bit. So I think it's just lending to, I think it's just like a culmination of all these things. Um, also when I'm laying down, 
if I'm flat on my back, it like puts pressure on my diaphragm, which obviously because like gravity is pushing down, right? It's just really uncomfortable and it makes breathing uncomfortable too. So again, with the mouth open, so I think I just have a lot going on over here. Um, but yeah, I haven't had to take any medication today thus far. It is uncomfortable. It does feel crampy, but it's not unbearable. But I feel like I have a headache coming in maybe because of the way that I was laying on my pillow and I might just have to be like a little. So I'm trying to get it together. I'm gonna eat something again, probably like some rice, something you know, soft and minimal and keep drinking my water. Actually, I think I might hit a little bit more of the prune juice um, because I'm just, and um, as far as like it could, I could be a little bit dehydrated still. I have been drinking the, what do they call it? Compare it to Pedialyte, but it's the Walgreens band brand. Um, so it, it very well could be all of these things all together, just making a girl not feel 100%. I mean, obviously why would I? I just had an organ taken out, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make it. We're, we're getting there. I'm hanging in there. And um, I do know, depending on how I'm lying, if I even try to lie to the side a little bit, so, so that I'm not just having laying flat on my back, it makes my hips hurt. And there's like a, like a pulsating feeling like that. And um, butt cramps. Butt cramps are still kind of a thing, which is a little confusing for me. But I did, it, whatever. What day, where, what, what day are we on? Let's see, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so day four. Um, yeah, here we are. The, um, living the life. <laughs> Ow, okay, no giggles, no giggles. Guys, <laughs> so my auntie just left, and wouldn't you know, um, burping an adult you know, the way that you would burp a baby it really works. Getting out the last bit of the air bubbles, I still feel like I have that one right under my rib here, which is really uncomfortable, and I can really feel it if I put my hands up and like try to deep breath. It feels like a hitch in your side, you know, when you like get that stitch in your side, and you have to kind of like wait for life to pass you by a little bit so that you can breathe again. It's like that. And so it makes me wonder, I don't, it shouldn't have anything to do with the surgery. Did I already mention that, um, that she did find some endometriosis somewhere and she cut it out and she sent it to the lab for testing, but she didn't say where she cut it from. So. I can't imagine that it would have anything anywhere to do with my diaphragm, but um, I wonder if it's just adding to the discomfort because some was cut from somewhere and maybe it's just things are pulling and adjusting and things of that nature. I don't know. What I do know is I still have not needed to take any pain medication today so far. Yes, I am making progress, you guys. I am making progress and I didn't tell you, but, um, or I might've, I don't even remember what I've said anymore. When I read one edit, when I edit through this, um, I'll probably feel like I'm rambling and saying a lot of the same things, but they gave me a prescription of ibuprofen and they gave me a prescription of Percocet. I have not been taking the Percocet because it doesn't make me feel good. And it, I don't feel like it was helping the same way that the ibuprofen has, but it was making me feel high and it just wasn't. Uh, I don't know why y'all like that. It's, it's not a good feeling. It's really not. Mm -mm, no. But when he went and got my prescription for it, they also offered to give him some, some Narcan. Narcan? Narcan. And he was like, well, what was this for? And they were like, you know, just in case, like, just in case she gets, like, a little pill happy and she just, like, keeps, like, popping a little bit. You know, just doing a, like, doing a little bottle, a little Narc, Narcan, just to, like, you know, just to make sure that she doesn't and he was like, what? No, she's not. She's not taking this medication, period. So I'm just, I'm not taking it, right? But um, 
yeah, they offer that now, I guess. That's just a little aside. That's just a little tidbit. Um, so now, I, now that I've been sufficiently burped by my aunt. Ow, <laughs> hold on. <clears throat> now that I've been sufficiently burped, I'm going to have some rice and maybe have a little bit of a nap still because I... I am still really tired. Like my body's just tired. I don't feel as stuffy right now as I did when I woke up, but I'm still not, you know, like 100% or anything like that. Um, my aunt thought that it might be like some of the last drags of anesthesia run running off and maybe a little bit of the Percocet, I don't know. Um, I gave up the dehydration, which I did finish. I got through the bottle. Let me tell you, Walgreens, it's disgusting. It is, but I know that you're not, um, you don't do it for taste, you do it for function, right? This isn't, this isn't to taste good. We're doing it for function because I need to be hydrated. So I'm hoping that I'm all nice and hydrated, hydrated cold, you know, I'm all nice and lubed up so that I can move things along still. Um, still not bleeding very much. Even after having bowel movements, there's still not very much blood. And the blood that is there, it's very like light and watery. So it's like a light red and like a watery. It's not like period blood at all. So I'm not having very much bleeding at all. I probably don't even have to wear underwear for real. I just am right now with a, um, a panty liner just as a precaution, just in case there is gonna be any dripping. Um, I did bleed a little bit that first day but not really since and not after every bathroom visit, only just occasionally after peeing. Well, there sometimes be a little bit on the tissue, but there hasn't been any on the panty line or anything like that. And it's very occasional. So I think I'm pretty solid on that front. I'm healing up decently as far as I can tell. And I think, I think that's about it. Let's talk about the hospital care that I had real quick though while I'm thinking about it. Um, I didn't really. Is my lighting okay? Can you see me? Is I did, I, okay. Are we got back here? Okay. Yeah, so I, I did end up staying overnight and the roommate that I had, she was an elderly woman. She was probably like 80s or something. And I think maybe she might've had a hip replacement. So she was, a, she was pretty bad shape and she had other surgeries. She had had previous surgeries that I think fused her spine or something, so she didn't really have good neck movement, and that was something that she mentioned a lot. Um, but she seemed like she was in a lot of pain, so she was constantly kind of like whimpering and wailing and even screaming sometimes and constantly pushing the button to get them to come in there because her pain was just i guess off the scales and they would take their time coming in and even so much to the point where i would even push my button for her so that they could come in and like attest, attend to her because she seemed like she was in a lot of discomfort and a lot of pain and they would make you wait about 10, 15 minutes before they would come. And that's with all of the machines going off and all of that. And I'm thinking it's because they probably are understaffed, especially the later in the day that it got. And there was only just a few people on the floor. But specifically for me, they wanted me to push the button and wait for them to come in to go to the bathroom so they could accompany me because I guess I was still a fall risk and they needed to watch me pee to make sure that I could do it. And then I had to fill up like a bottle, like a certain amount so they could like safely say like, okay, you, you're able to urinate on your own. This is after they took the catheter out. And at one point I pushed the button and I'm laying there for like 15 minutes and nobody's come in yet. Um, so I decided to get up and go pee on my own cause I gotta pee. And my bed starts going off and where the bed starts screaming where it's like, don't move don't get out of bed. And it probably went off for like five minutes before anybody came in there. So like if I had fallen and I'm just laying there on the floor, I would have been there for a minute. And this happened a couple of times where 
I have to get up in the middle of the night and I have to pee. And so I'm trying to follow instructions where I push the button and have them come in and help me, but they're not coming. So I just have to get up and go. Eventually they turned my bed off so that it won't start screaming at them because they started to realize that I'm going to go to the bathroom because I need to pee. And clearly I'm able to, like I'm balanced enough. And they just started to let me do it on my own, but they still was not like featuring my roommate. And so like all night she was kind of over there just like yelling and screaming and, and eventually she would yell like, help, help me, help me. And so when she would do that, I would push my button to try to like bring some more urgency for people to come see her. But they just weren't. And I don't, I don't think that they were purposefully ignoring her. I'm sure they were just spread so thin, but there weren't that many people in the wing that I was. I think there might have been like six or seven rooms. And I don't know how many nurses were on staff. There were two for sure. Um, maybe more. I'm not sure. But it was just, it wasn't like the ideal experience for me to be paying the amount that I'm about to have to pay to not really get care. Like, I feel like I'm getting the same amount of care at home on my own that I was getting there. Um, apart from them like coming in at random times, waking you up and stuff so they can check your vitals and make sure that you're good on that front when you actually needed them, they weren't really available. Now granted, they were very nice and they were very kind to me. And then when they would go help the lady, she was kind to them and stuff, but you know, you could tell that she was frustrated because she's in a lot of pain and they were definitely taking their time to get to her. Um, and it was even so much to the point where I think she was in so much pain that maybe she forgot that I was there too because sometimes I would call them for myself and when they would come in, she would immediately start yelling like, come help me, come help me. And they would bypass me and go see to her. It was a lot. And I'm glad that I was only there for a night because if I had to just like stay in that environment, it would have been very frustrating. And I, I didn't need to. Clearly I'm not having the same pain level as, as she was. So she's the one that really needs the care and I hope that she's getting it. And actually I hope that she's home now because she'd probably get far better care at home than she was getting at the hospital. That's just that on that. I know that hospitals are overrun and overwhelmed and things are getting crazy again and the short staffed and all of that. And I, and I see it, I lived it. And it's just, it's not good for anybody. So really, if you can stay out of the hospital this season and just in general, but like really right now, I definitely, particularly if you are in the US of A, Mm -mm. It, it's way too expensive to be in a hospital, particularly overnight, for that to be the care, to be honest. Yeah. I have a visitor. She's been sleeping all day, but now she's come to see about Mama to see what I'm up to. Me. Say hi. Nope. All right. Um, we're done. No, don't get on my tummy. Oh, she's coming up. She's co okay. All right. Yep. And here we are. Yep. Hi, sweetness. Hi, baby. Yeah. Hi. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, baby. Oh, so boobies. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, they really want to go outside. But we can't go outside yet, baby. Not yet. Not yet. I know. Hey, midday. It's, um... 1.56, might as well say 2 o'clock. I was laying down on the couch, had a little nappy nap, you know, a little nappy poo, a little, a little time out. And, and I woke up and I laid there some more, watched some TikToks, you know, as you do past the time. And um, when I finally stretched out and stood up, I just, I feel like it's not really getting any easier. You know what I mean? Like, I just really feel like, um, 
Like that sea bear keeps coming and just beating my ass. I don't know. I just, I really thought, like, you know, you stay still and you, hi, baby. Hi. You settle down, you know, watch some TED Talks and just like be low key and don't do too much and your body's gonna recoup, but like, boy, is she taking her time, you know what I mean? I'm not like complaining or criticizing myself or anything like that, because healing, it takes time. You know, I had a whole organ removed and some tissues and things like that, but I just, I keep doing that, putting my whole hand in the camera. Am I an amateur? Um, but I, I just, where's that easy button? You guys remember that easy button that used to be a thing in the early 2000s? Someone go ahead and hit that for me. Well, I guess it's about that time to go ahead and do like a wrap up and <laughs> final thoughts. Um... It's been a very rough week. I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel like I got chewed up and not even spit up yet. Like I'm still getting chewed the fuck up for real. Um, when, when she said it's gonna be a six to eight week healing time, she meant that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't know if I'm gonna be ready to go back massaging in another week. It might be a little bit soon, especially if my ribs are still ribbing. Um, so I actually still might even have to put that on hold. So there's a lot of like work things that I'm gonna have to start figuring out here. This upcoming week actually, um, but you know, it's something that I had to do for myself. It sucks that it had to get to this point, but all the factors that we talked about leading up to this moment, I don't have any regrets. I just wish that it, it hurt a little bit less. I really do, I really do, I really, really do. But I mean, you know, it's surgery. They're literally cutting you open and taking things out. So I couldn't have expected it to not be this for real, but, um. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing my best. I'm a thug, you know. I'm, um, I'm hold tight and I'm gonna get back to doing my K pop reactions eventually here. I don't know exactly when I'm gonna get back to that. I'd like to start recording again soon just because I'm in the house and not doing too much else, but. It, this, I, I mean, I couldn't do it this week. I just couldn't. I had to give myself that grace. Like, let's just be honest. Um, maybe next week and probably the following weeks and whatnot, especially if I'm not feeling well enough to get back to massaging again. I'm gonna have to do something with myself in my time, right? So. Looks like husband's just getting home. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be all right. I'm still gonna have my up days and my down days as far as being sad about being sterile now and having all these cute little babies running around and knowing that that's not my journey. But you know, my journey is something else and I'm looking forward to finding out what that's gonna be. Hopefully like a soft pastel, you know, lavender life where I'm not having to bend over backwards to survive. That's what I'm hoping for. And you know, hopefully I'll be able to go on vacations again soon, one day when I'm financially able and um, this Panasonic clears up. All right, that's gonna be that on that. Thank you for listening and going on this journey with me. And if you get the surgery one day, I hope this helps and let me know how you heal up. And I'll see you later, bye.